Through the magic of the color camera, you are standing before the most awesome spectacle on earth, the Grand Canyon. This fantastic gorge, 217 miles long, 10 miles wide and a mile deep, compresses within its layers of rock two billion years of geological history, a record as legible to scientists as the pages of a book. To explore this greatest of all natural wonders, all you have to do is change the slide in your viewer or projector each time you hear this musical note. As we look across the canyon, colors range from gold and beige through purple and azure, ever shifting with the angle of a sun or the shadow of a cloud. More than a million people a year come here to stand and gaze in wonderment and then to ask, how could such a thing have happened? Well, the record is all here for those able to read it, although the timetable is somewhat vague. Geologists agree that it's a young canyon, young, that is, as geologists reckon time, and that it's still in the process of forming. Somewhere between seven and 15 million years ago, this area was a great plain, almost at sea level, with a small stream running through it. Then began a slow, gentle rising of the earth, causing the river to flow more swiftly. Inch by inch, it cut a deeper channel. And as the centuries ticked by, the gorge was deepened to thousands of feet. At the same time, erosion of the surrounding canyon walls created landslides and gradually widened the gorge. This process is still going on, slowly but inexorably. Each year, the gorge is deepened by perhaps a fraction of an inch. I wish they had moved back just a couple of inches. But it's a breathtaking shot, isn't it? During the slow unfolding of the centuries, the Colorado River continued to cut deeper into the gorge, exposing layer after layer of rock and turning back page by page the history of our planet. The Grand Canyon is the only place in the world where you can stand in one spot and see clearly revealed rocks dating from all the known eras of geological time. The deeper you look, the more ancient the rock, with each layer containing fossils which record the life of that era. At the very bottom is the hard black rock of the inner gorge, formed long before the dawn of life, when our spinning ball of earth had scarcely cooled. Its age? About two billion years. Yes, that's snow in the foreground, but while it may be freezing here on the rim, Visitors at the so-called Phantom Ranch on the floor of the canyon may be enjoying subtropical temperatures. Descending the 5,000 to 7,000 feet from the snow-tipped rim to the canyon floor is the equivalent in climate and temperature to traveling from southern Canada to northern Mexico. The winding river, which looks so placid from this elevation, actually is a swirling, roaring torrent from 300 to 400 feet wide and ranging from 12 to 45 feet deep. Each 24 hours, it carries away about half a million tons of mud and sand. Geologists regard the Grand Canyon as the world's most striking example of the work of the erosive forces of nature. And these forces have carved countless strange and intriguing forms from the primeval rock. How would you describe that massive shape in the center of the picture? Imagination might give it many names, but the round tower-like structure in its center has caused it to become known as the battleship. One of the most fascinating experiences for Grand Canyon visitors is to take a mule train trip down into the canyon via Bright Angel Trail or the newer and longer Kaibab Trail which is the only link between the north and south rim of the canyon. Don't be afraid to try it. The trail is wide with easy grades, and it's banked by rock guard walls wherever it winds along the precipitous cliffs. Far below, you can see one of the man-made wonders of the Grand Canyon, the Kaibab Suspension Bridge, 
a vital link in the Kaibab Trail. The bridge is 440 feet long, five feet wide, and suspended about 70 feet above the raging river. No need to worry, though. It's a modern structural steel bridge and perfectly safe. All the materials had to be carried from the rim of the canyon to the bottom on the backs of mules. In addition, there were 10 thick steel cables, each 548 feet long and weighing more than a ton, which had to be carried by manpower. Each cable was strung out along the ground and a gang of about 50 men, mostly Indians, picked it up and then looking like some gigantic centipede, carried it six and a half miles down the Kaibab Trail to the bridge site. This so-called watchtower is typical of the primitive architectural forms erected by ancient inhabitants of the Grand Canyon. In the foreground are members of the Havasupai Indian tribe, whose home is in a lovely meadow on the canyon floor below. Of all the native tribes, the Havasupais have been the least touched by civilization, and yet despite their isolation, or perhaps because of it, they are also the most peace-loving. It is a proud claim of the Havasupais that no member of their tribe has ever killed a white man. We're on our way now for a visit to what has been described as the nearest thing to Shangri-La on this continent, the Havasupai Indian Reservation, located in the lovely green valley at the westernmost end of the national park. You can drive almost all of the 143 miles from Grand Canyon Village to the land of the Supais, but the last eight miles must be covered on foot or on an Indian pony. The village is located on Havasu Creek, which tumbles down into the valley through a series of three breathtaking waterfalls. Here is a never to be forgotten sight. A ceremonial dance being performed by members of the Hopi tribe, which dwells on a reservation just east of the national park. From this sandy, dry and shallow soil, the Hopi succeed almost miraculously in wresting a living by growing corn and other crops. Their very existence depends on getting enough rainfall, and so it's natural that their elaborate ceremonies and tribal dances should center around prayers for rain, for bountiful harvests, and for creation of life. Even their famous snake dances are really prayers to the rain gods. And the rattlesnakes, which are washed and sprinkled with sacred meal before the ceremonies, are regarded as messengers to the gods. These are Hopi tribesmen, and behind them is Hopi House, where you can inspect and buy, if you choose, remarkable examples of Indian craftsmanship. Here, too, ceremonial dances are performed each evening. You ladies may be particularly interested to know that the land of the Hopis is a woman's paradise. Tribal rules stipulate that the husband must live with his wife's relatives. Children belong to the wife, and so do the house and its store of corn and other foodstuffs. Furthermore, only women have the right of divorce. Those big ears identify this young four-footed native of the canyon as a mule deer who makes his home in the Kaibab forest around the seven to 8,000 foot level. Nowhere else in the United States can you see deer in such large numbers. They seem quite blasé regarding human intruders, possibly because no hunting is allowed, and you can usually approach to within about 20 yards before they scamper off through the woods. In the evening, they congregate in the open meadows to feed on clover and you will often see groups of as many as 200 grazing contentedly within a few yards of the road along which cars are whizzing by. Purple black clouds and a rising wind are the prelude to one of the most dramatic spectacles nature can provide, a storm over the Grand Canyon. Storms like this have buffeted the rugged canyon walls over thousands of centuries each adding a brush stroke to the master painting which lies before us. Suddenly, 
violent and unpredictable. The canyon storms seem to warn puny man that nature is still his master. Color photographs become even more beautiful as the purple shadows of evening glide across the canyon walls. It is then one falls to wondering what the next 10 million years will bring. Geologists say the raging river will cut its way down still another 2,000 feet before it reaches sea level. Then with the force of gravity tempered, it will subside to become a placid stream like the Hudson or the Delaware. How long will all this take? Nobody knows. Sunset over the Grand Canyon. An unforgettable panorama, best appreciated perhaps in silence. How could one describe it? Impossible. But there it is, a blinding glimpse of eternity, soon to fade now into pink and azure, and finally into night, but leaving us God's promise of another dawn.
Thank <laughs> you.